you can uh, support up to CAN, CAN and the uh, CT4 bytes of data. I'll tell you how I can support. Okay. But as I said before, you are nothing to do with the implementation everything. So what are the yeah, implementation yeah. done? You have to validate the things. It, whether it can support up to 64 bytes of data, or see, there is also things there. You can support 8, 16, or uh, 32, 64. Based on requirement, you have to use here. Yeah. See, uh, you last time we discussed that right, you said can we capital UDS you are more interested, and also you wanted to cover me doors also requirement tool also, right? Yes. And it can. This is a, yeah. So these are the main things which we discussed last time. Kenoe, Capel, UDS, DOS, and CAN. And if you yeah. have any further requests from your end, yes, we'll also take up that. Yeah, I'm saying like, what additional are you, uh, do you train people in? Apart from this, what additional courses do you train? Okay, so apart from this, okay, example. Uh, okay, apart from which we discussed, you made, right? So in yes. general, we uh, explain the people like example how to raise the bugs. Example, there's a version control management, right? And maybe you might be using Zaira or you might be using any tools. Okay, so we'll mm -hmm. explain like how to raise the tickets, how to raise the bugs. So what are the conditions you need to take as a part of your uh, uh, bug raising, and also the dose process, like how to add the test case, how to link the test case. So this also will be taken care, and writing uh, okay. data to ensure. Apart from that, depends on the tool. Example, we flashed. Example, uh, how to flash the sequence and how your software will be flashed. Version control management, bug, bug life cycle, and the test care design and text. Tech mainly will be covered. from. And after that, from, Capel. I mean, based on your request, we can also cover that. Yeah. See, mainly in the Kenya, we, we have many tools. Can we work? No, no, from mainly from the doors point of view, like mainly from the. Uh, suppose there are requirements, right? How to write requirements and how to write test cases from the requirements yes. and how to. Uh, maintain the like a uh, requirement management requ what does a requirement manager do those courses you do correct yes yes, yes of course that is what i'm saying requirement manager okay. those. data we can cover see i think this is taking uh, taking a lot of time so if okay. you okay just a minute we'll try otherwise but, you can start sharing now you can see here we have many bit fields in the can flexible data frame but in the can we have so few less compared to can empty with the conventional can Right, mm -hmm. so here flexible data frame, BR it, BR battery switch, are state These are the specific to your clan, uh, can empty flexible data frame. So if you see this DLC, we have a only one byte here. Here we have a three, uh, I think uh, 12 bit uh, will be there. 12 bit are allocated for DLC. Mm -hmm. So which means that if you mention the DLC as eight bits, example DLC as eight, you can transfer eight bytes of data. So if you say if you select a DLC as uh, what you call uh, 10. You can transmit 10 bytes of data. If your DLC is sent as uh, uh, 32, you can transmit 32 bytes of data. So based on the DLC which you mentioned, you can transmit the data here. Understood? Or you want simple here? Yeah? Here DLC it will allow only 8 bytes, 8 bits. So you will mention 8 bytes max. You can transmit. So here you can mention okay. up to 32 or 64 bytes. You can transmit 64 bytes of data. Okay. So in yeah. so in result, it will be a, only 8 bit length. Here it will hmm. be more length. Simple. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's only uh same 11 bit identifier can can and can have to have both 11 bit identifier but the support mm. is huge difference between 8 byte support well, and the data byte data, support. Will, data is the only the difference between the can and can empty so which you can mm. adjust at 64 bytes you can transmit okay 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 Got it, sir. fine fine so this is about the can and can empty right okay. yeah mm. now so in general apart from the can empty we also have one more call when you wanted to transmit more than with only can so example you had only can you don't have any can empty so we, if you want to transmit more than eight bits of data how you will transmit okay so the one one, uh, one concept called here transport layer mm -hmm. which means that transport uh, what is called uh, flow control mechanism it is no ah okay okay here it is not there what i was saying is flow control mechanism mm -hmm. so what is flow control mechanism example you have only can and you want to transfer more than eight bits of data that example when you if you have a uh, you know the yeah, uds protocol at 20 what is 22 read did no sir i don't remember that okay okay Fine. no no issues no issues will next week uh, next week uh, and that will we'll start with that on better so example oh. 0, 3, 22 uh, did example 1 2 3 4 which will give the example 1 2 3 4 is meant for 1 2 3 4 is data and different which is meant for uh, reading some information from the ecu okay mm -hmm. so example mm -hmm. you might be getting the uh, within 8 bytes of data or more than 8 bytes of data Clear. Mm -hmm. So what we'll mm -hmm. do is when you wanted to transmit more than eight bits of data, so we use the flow control mechanism. Example, example. How we do? First, we'll send the message to ECU, okay, and then it will send the acknowledgement. Example. Oh, this one. Yeah, this diagram I remember exactly. But yeah, that will be useful if you go over again. 
So how many bytes it is? Yes. Okay. So this is a multi-frame request. Okay. So one thing you mm -hmm. need to understand is this in a when you're sending the multi-frame, what is a multi-frame request? So when you want to transmit more than eight bytes of data with the CAN, we use a multi-frame. Okay. But that, huh? that uh, document is there, that document also I'll forward today. Okay. Oops, so mm -hmm. in the multi-frame request, what will send the ECU? The ECU in the first frame. So the first frame which I'm going to send it to ECU will mention that we'll keep this as a one, which is mm -hmm. which, which is means that this kept as a one in a control field, which means which means that we are giving the information to the ECU that we are going to transmit more messages, more data after this. Okay. Okay. So once you get this, ECU will send the acknowledgement. Example 30 blocks is how many frames you are you want to transmit, example 0 to and what is the suppression time? I mean, the, between the, I'll tell you, example 20, 20 milliseconds, or 20 to 50 milliseconds, okay? Okay, so this will be sent by ECU. This will send by this one. So which means that, first we'll send the ECU for message in which we'll be mentioning as one zero, as I said before, which in, in information to ECU is that we are sending more than eight bits of data. So ECU acknowledges that, okay, right, you are uh, good, and then we'll, it will send the flow control frame. So then, which you'll get the permission to transfer more bytes after that. So after this, you'll you will be sending 21 followed by 22. This this will be a frames. Okay. So here it will be transferring the remaining bytes. You understood or you want me to repeat? No, no, I understand. Go ahead. Simple. One zero means we are transferring multi frame requests. After that, you should get a acknowledgement from ECU to transfer further remaining bytes. Okay. So remaining okay. is how will follow. It will it will follow the standard procedure. It will start with 21 as identified and follow by 7 bytes and follow by 7 bytes. So like this, you can accommodate to 4096 bytes of data you can transmit. 4096. With are using flow oh, wow. control mechanism. Okay, okay. 4096 messages. Okay. So last. 4096 frame you can transmit. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So this will be important here because uh, in a day day to day activity, you should know how many bytes of data you're getting transmitted from ECU or how, how many data we are going to transmit because there will not be everywhere like you will be sending only eight bytes of data, right? You somewhere mm -hmm. you are you need to write something which is has a more than eight bytes of data or you might be expecting the data from ECU which which will have like a more than eight bytes of data. So everywhere you have to follow this flow control maker. If you are sending it multi uh, more than ECU will acknowledge. If the ECU is sending more, we have to send the flow control. Code. So like this, it will follow. So you said this is all the CAN developer will be doing it. So what is the language that they use to write convert it into software? MRC, MRC code they use in general. MRC. Embedded code C, okay. MRC they use. I mean, at least in our project, which they are because they'll use embedded C and uh, yeah, so ID will be different. Like they use Chase 32 sometimes on Core Composer IDEs. So these are the IDEs. I mean, that will be there, right? ID environment there where they live, do the code and they will do that. Okay. Integrated development environment. Fine. In general, you see, in general, what are the can implementation? What the, what all we discussed till now? So basic mm -hmm. implementation will be done by your developers only, generally. But we yes. uh, that is for development job. How they're going to be? How they has to be part of it, it as per the requirement. So first it goes to requirement, on the based on requirement, I mean design level. So design level is nothing but what you're going to implement in the software. What is your mm -hmm. uh, CAN message going to be? Is it CAN or CAN MD or LIN or anything else? What you're going to design your uh, software? Everything will be in the design level. Okay. So the based okay. on requirement, then there's a level of design they'll do. And the parallelly we are to see in the B model when you see the activities will be parallelly started, right? So design level started and the uh, testing side will uh, start developing the specification. So when the development is done, of course, it has to be integrated into your software release and then the, the what you call it, the validation people has to take, check whatever this thing is done as per the customer requirements, so that is a validation team responsible. Correct. So whatever it is done, this as per specification, they have to uh, follow it. Maybe based on the, okay. the basic things, like physical it will be based on the can only. But apart from that, on top of that, there will be customer requirements, specific customer requirements. For example, DADS may be different, CAN message address will be different, and uh, they'll be adding new uh, functionalities. So that will be specific to client, and that also they have to adopt into the your software, and they have to integrate everything there, and they have to release the software. For which we'll be starting everything. Our job is like, when the focus is like, you have to entire requirements will be uh, by be like reference for us, and for which we have to, we should not fall, uh, deviate from the any requirement, because Ultimately, even though you go for design level or if you go for any any level, requirements only the reference. You should not uh, go deviation from the requirements based on some some other inputs or some from developer information. You should not deviate from any aspects. Even someone says which is not the requirement, you should not accept it as a validation as a testing. So requirement only the reference and whatever it is there, it has to be followed strictly there. 
Okay. okay. So, yeah. so in general, this will be our, of course, software development cycle will be different, but in general, uh, in automotive, uh, most of the people will use the V cycle model, right? You know V cycle? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So, this is going to come STLC, software testing life cycle. How it will be? Like, we start with, as you are asking something, right? Process. So, we start with the yeah. equipment analysis and then we'll do the test planning. How the test is going to work, the scope of the testing, test planning, and test case development. Based on the requirements and uh, this one, we'll do the test case development and test environment setup. Like, example, what are the tools we are going to use in your environment? Like, example, maybe Ken case or KenOE or any uh, other tools which are needed for your execution part, that will be environment setup and test execution. So, once you're done set with them, you have to start executing test cases, maybe manual or you may be using capital scripting. It's up to you based on your requirement basis. Okay. And a test. And a test closer. Like example, based on your expectation behavior, if the expectation behavior matches with observed behavior, of course you will pass it. If it is not, you have to raise a bug in the era tool or any IMS or any any tool you can do on that, you have to raise a bug based on the where you will mention the log all will take the all log evidences along with that we'll mention the test procedure and uh, We'll mention the software, the software validation and what are the preconditions. We'll mention all things and we'll attach the log evidence and we'll as a ticket. So yes. this will be a typical uh, STLC. It will be same for every anywhere. Okay. This should be follow same. So ST, this is called a software okay. testing life cycle. Okay. But uh, again, yes, sir. In yeah. the test execution, you said hmm. you did, we can either do uh, manual or automation through CAPL. Uh, is there different types of testing that will be done? Like regression test or system test, those yeah, yeah that, that is also yes. If you want that, also can cover. There'll be different types of testing. Will there smoke testing? Will be there sanity testing? Will be there regression testing? Will be there full testing? Will be there acceptance, beta, alpha? So there are a lot oh, of wow. the system testing also. There's software integration testing will be there. System integration testing okay. also there. So there'll be yeah, many types of testing. I'm you want only to aware that of also? like I'm only aware of unit testing, system integration. Yeah. Uh, sorry, unit testing, system mm. integration, system validation and hmm. system maintenance okay okay so there must be several before or after that but i'm only aware of these uh, testing okay no problem i will we'll cover in one of the session also that is not an issue okay see okay. in general apart from unit testing we also have black box testing white box testing like uh, white box we ah. will go through like uh, example speak reviews will go through in uh, black box we'll do a function level white box only will not execute the test cases in general when it comes to black okay. box testing we'll do execute the code Right, uh, when back only the module level, function level, uh, unit testing means only the code level, statement level will do the testing. But it comes to fly, black box testing, nothing, nothing as such matters. So we'll always consider the, the whether the software is meeting with your uh, customer expectations or not. Even in testing okay. also, there'll be two types, like example, function testing, non-function testing. Right, so function hmm. testing is just like example, uh, you might be counting the function example, EBA, emergency breakers in function. And uh, non-functional means the example is a durability, like example uh, performance testing and uh, stability, usability. Mm. So there'll be many things are there. Okay. So if you want, uh, if if you have any need any assets, yes, we can cover in one of the session. That is not issue. But you just make a note of it. Based on that, we can plan a class. I mean, we can plan the classes. Okay. So so sir, one request is like uh, I know we you mentioned that uh, we can at least one or two sessions we can go through the doors. Uh, requirements side, would that be? Yes. Uh, will you be able to uh, go through them in the upcoming two sessions? Like allocate two sessions for that, and then we can go into the actual scanlizer and canu practice. So you want me to start with doors first? Yeah, in the next session, at least two sessions, like doors, uh, how you create requirements and all those, how it looks like that, those things. No problem, no problem. So I'll make a note of it. Next, we'll I come up with the door session then. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, so today, what we go. Yeah, two should be enough. I think one should be enough because I, I'll try. We'll we'll see. We'll see how we based on your interaction. We can see. We can extend a two session. That is not issue. But okay. uh, ultimately, you have to get a conference uh, on that. That is important. Thank right? you. Yes, sir. So yeah, we. So can we close the session because already one hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Why? Right. about. So I, I'll just summarize the point. We discussed about the CAN frames and the CAN mm -hmm. types. Okay. And what is mm -hmm. the CANs we also covered? And also we covered STLC. Okay, software test life cycle I covered. Okay, yes. Okay, these yes, are sir, things yes. we covered. So next things. Okay, next thing you already told doors. So I'll come up with yeah, a proper. Yeah, uh, 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 the agenda would be like okay, doors. Suppose if uh, how to uh, like create the requirements, uh, how to uh, uh, create the test cases, how to create the traceability, something like that. If you can give mm -hmm. us an idea. Mm -hmm. 
no problem to, that will that we can cover not an issue yeah how to decompose okay. the requirements from the feature to the functional to the implementation example mm -hmm. one or two examples like those things mm -hmm. okay so uh, this transfer protocol as i discussed earlier so with the standard can you can transfer only eight bits of data right so if you want to transfer more than that this comes in picture okay so how we will send that in a format like first frame second frame consecutive frame we call it as like a multi frame because we'll change it okay so for that what you need to do is i think last time i also explained so so when you wanted to send the more than eight bits of data so the uh, format would like this right one zero and uh, let us say you want in 10 bits of data and a three and a one two three four like this so and so okay so after this you are sending to your uh, uh, message to ecu ecu will acknowledge with the token to frame okay like this so here also there will be few parameters with that that you will let you know once you go to the frame. so once you get the acknowledgement from the ecu then you are, you are good to go for transmitting remaining bytes am i clear yes sir okay so it will start with it it will have some standard sequence like it will start with 21 and then end with 2f and then it will repeat from 21 to 2f so with this flow control mechanism you can transmit up to 4096 bytes of data at max okay so now how it would be it will be explaining in this so this is a kind of single frame like unsegmented message means single frame like when you have the data which can accommodate in a standard can which is eight, within 8 bits of data there you can use the single frame request but when you are transmitting more than 8 bits of data that will be a multi frame you can see this here hope you are able to see the page 8 right yes sir i can see yeah i can see okay so sender will send the first frame then the re receiver will send the flow control frame which means acknowledgement to your sender by confirming that yes you can transmit remaining bytes of your data that means remaining frames so in okay. flow control frame which i mentioned here 30 right so first bit will be block size that means how many uh, messages you are going to transmit after this and also separation time which means that so what is the time difference between the your frame request so that you have to that the issue will send here yeah. yes, 30 sir. means in the standard Control frame BSP blocks is how many uh, frames you are going to transmit. Separation time is the time difference between your request and the multiple requests. You can see. So once you send the first request, first frame to your ECU, it will be flow control. In the flow control, what is sending now? Block size equal to three and separation time equal to 20 milliseconds. Because the block size is three, so it is allowed to send three messages here. You can see one, two, three. Yes. Okay. 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 So yeah. one, two, three. For every Blocks. frame, is, sir. For every frame, they don't need to be acknowledgement. Not acknowledgement. So this alone message is alone is enough. Where you are, where the issue is confirming that you are good to go for transmitting of this block size with the separation time. So in the response from the issue itself is confirming how many remaining frames are you going to transmit. So because of that, you don't need an acknowledgement. Yes. I agree, but what if the SN two is not sent, is not received? That time, how will hmm. the receiver uh, figure it out that it was not received, it was not sent? See, in in those cases, see, this is about the flow control frame. So, in 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 general, what we are asking is generic generic can. So, that acknowledgement will not be given to your ECU. That means the acknowledgement bit will not be monitored during the sending transmission. So, there again, a, a CKT will rise in general. Okay. That comes to generic talk. Okay, but here, so what are the frames you are going to transmit? That's fine. So you will be sending that. You can see one, two, three, and separation time I said you right. So time mm -hmm. difference between your the immediate response and the, this one, separation time. Okay. So in general, yes. After this, again it goes to flow control, and then yes, it will be further continuous until you complete your entire the remaining bytes. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So this is your uh, general format like. Uh, can ID PCA means uh, the PCA bit field the DLC which are going to transmit. Okay, so in this we call the single frame, first frame, consecutive frame, flow control frame. So this time you just go to that. Okay, whatever I said, uh, you just try to uh, correlate while you're reading the document. Okay, so okay. you'll get better to know. So this is one of the important concepts which you need to know because every time we cannot send the eight bytes only the right. So there are there'll be some instances where you have to send the more. Are you wanted to write the data which has more than eight bits? 